right, today I'm going to talk about Roots, which is a review topic for us. Um, but we're going to introduce a couple new things here today, too. Uh, I have a couple things highlighted here. Uh, you can see the definition of a square root uh, is kind of confusing in words. So it says a number that is multiplied by itself to form a product is a square root of that product. So um, we'll actually go through some examples. But a couple things I want to point out that I want you to know. Um, another name for roots is radicals, okay? And this is the symbol. So a square root and radical are the same thing. So if you ever hear me say radical instead of root, that's or uh, square root, that's what I'm talking about. Um, and uh, square, well, we'll get into that in a second, sorry. Um, okay, so for non-negative numbers, the operations of squaring and finding a square root are inverse operations. So this is another thing I want you to know. Squaring and square roots, they're inverses, kind of like um, adding and subtracting are inverses, or multiplying and dividing are inverses. Squaring a number and square rooting a number are inverses as well, okay? Um, because they undo each other. So for instance, what do I mean? Well, let's take uh, four to the second power. This equals 16. Okay. If we square root 16, we're essentially answering this question. What to the second power gives me 16? Right? And this comes out to 4. Okay. So we know, and that the reason for that is because 4 times 4 equals 16. So we end up back at the beginning. So they undo each other. Um, and that's what we're looking at. So um, that's why they are inverses. And we'll talk a, a little bit more in depth about these right now. Okay. So there are actually two answers to all square roots. You can actually get a positive answer and you can get a negative answer. Let's take that same example that we just talked about, the square root of 16. Um, the square root of 16, we said, comes out to 4. But it can also be negative 4. And some of you are probably wondering what the heck that's all about. All right, so remember the reason uh, the square root of 16 is 4 is because 4 times 4 equals 16. But with our new knowledge of negative numbers, remember that negative 4, excuse me, negative 4 times negative 4 also equals 16. Positive, or a negative times a negative will give us a positive. So we usually talk about the principal square root. That's the one that gives us the positive answer. Or the principal square root is the positive answer. Okay? So um, most of the time we'll talk about the principal square root, and we'll look for that positive answer. But I need you to know that it can be more than one. It could have a positive. It could have a negative. So sometimes what you'll see um, we'll talk about more about this in the future, is you'll see this right here, positive, negative, or the square root of 16 equals positive or negative 4, plus or minus 4. That's this symbol right here. This just indicates that the answer could be positive or negative. Okay. So, and they actually have that symbol right here. Too. So if you ever see that, that's what that means. Okay, so some perfect squares. Um, a perfect square is a number whose positive square root is a whole number. Um, so, for instance, uh, and you don't need this chart, uh, but these are the, the square roots that we know up through 100. So, for instance, uh, the square root of 9 gives me 3, or the square root of 49 gives me 7, or negative 7, right? But we're talking about the positives here uh, for right now. Um, so, and we know, we've know we known those, and most of us have memorized them at least up to a, a hundred. But um, remember, you can have square roots that aren't so nice, for instance, like the square root of five. This is, remember, an irrational number. Um, because if you try to, well, if you don't know the square root off, and it comes out as a, a decimal that never ends, and it's got a, a pattern, or it doesn't have a pattern, sorry. Uh, does not have a pattern, just a crazy decimal that goes on forever. That's irrational. So there are those numbers, too. Uh, the perfect squares are nice to work with because they work out very nicely. 
So those are some examples of perfect squares. And you can keep going. Um, so for instance, 11, the square root, oh, I'm sorry, 121, just doing that backwards. Uh, the square root of that is 11. Okay, and you can keep going. So. All right. And, and actually, if you're looking for one, the, the, the nice thing to do is just say, okay, what's 11 to the second power? Well, that's 121. Or 12 to the second power. That's going to be 144. And just keep going up. And that's how you can find your square roots. Or perfect squares, sorry. There actually is a kind of a, a sequence formula that you can use to find all of them, which we will not talk about, but it's pretty cool. Okay. Um, a number that is raised to the third power is a cube root of that product, okay? And these, this is where things are going to be a little bit new for you. So let's look at the example they give. Um, they say that since 2 to the third power equals 8, the cube root of 8 must equal 2. So here's what they're doing. They're saying, okay. All okay. right. So this, the cube root of 8, all right? So essentially, in this one, they're asking us, okay, x to the third equals 8. So what does x have to be to make that true? Well, I know that 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. So this must equal 2. That's the cube root. This number right here will indicate um, what, what you're looking for. So for instance, a square root looks just like this. You don't see a number. Um, there's actually, uh, it's accepted that there's a 2 there. They don't show it. Um, and if you're looking for the square root of 9, we get 3. Okay, because you're answering this question for this one. The square root. Uh, and then there's the cube root. Okay, so basically um, that number with your root will tell you what you're looking for. They even go up and say, okay, well, uh, what's the fourth root of 16? So you're asking yourself this question. What to the fourth power will give me 16? This happens to be 2 as well, since 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 16. And this will tell you what you're looking for. All right? <clears throat> so that's probably something that's new for you, um, but uh, is definitely something we'll talk about a little bit this year. More so in the future, uh, but we will hit on it just a little bit. So you can find cube roots, fourth roots, fifth roots, hundredth roots, whatever. Um, it is it is possible to do that. And that number out front will indicate um, what root you're looking for. And just remember that square roots will not have a number, but you're looking for um, uh, what if we're going to square that number, what we'll get, or what number squared will get us to that number base. Sorry, I tripped up on my words there. All right, so let's uh, do a couple examples. You want these written down so you have a reference here. Um, now, they don't tell you uh, what root you should find. So uh, you can find the principal square root out of that. Let's see if that's what they want. Check the book here. Yeah, they, they do give the principal square root or the positive one for an answer. So um, basically, remember square roots. Okay, so x to the second equals 49. That's the question we're answering. Or what to the second power will give me 49? Well, 7 does. 7 times 7 um, will give me 49. And obviously, too, you can use your calculator to find these if, if you need that. Um, the square root button is available. <laughs> Technically, this could be positive or negative 7, but we're just going to deal with the uh, principal square root here. All right, letter B. Letter B is going to come out negative no matter what. There's a negative hanging out front. And we're going to ask ourselves this question. What squared equals 36? 6 times 6 gets me to 36. And that's negative because there's a negative sitting out front there. All right, letter C introduces a cube root. So um, this one. We're going to look for answering this question. What to the third power equals negative 125? This one might not be as obvious. We're going to have to do some checking here. Um, but it actually comes out to negative 5. 
and here's why. Negative 5 times negative 5 is 25, or a positive 25, because a negative times a negative will give me a positive, and then 5 times negative 5 will give me to that a negative 125. All right. And lastly, um, if you have to square a, a fraction, very simple. You can actually just take this and split it up into its two parts. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. There we go. Same deal for this one. We're looking for the cube root of 1 and the cube root of 8. So we're asking ourselves for this one x to the third equals 1, or 1 times 1 times 1 equals 1. And for 8, x to the third equals 8, 2 times 2 times 2 goes. There we go. All right, clearly I've got some students on my way here. So uh, that is all I have for you, and um, we'll talk about this morning class.